If we take a look at the past, we know that our ancestors really loved to view the future as super technological. They envisioned flying cars in advanced cities, but they never imagined to have cars that do not need a driver. And yes, in today's world, we have those. Well, we are definitely getting closer to having a fully automated world, and we are starting in our streets with cars that we drive with. Hello everyone, welcome to another video from Lit Technology, the channel that just can't help itself from talking about anything and everything about technology. In this video, we are going to take a look at the leaders when it comes to automated and self-driving cars. And at the end of the video, you might understand better as to who is winning the race, pun intended, in self-driving cars. But in order for us to fully understand how deep the self-driving car rabbit hole goes, we need to know a little bit of background. According to the Society of Auto Engineers, or SAE, there are five levels when it comes to self-driving cars. And for us to fully grasp the best automation there is, a company must be able to reach level five and master it. The first level, super basic, as it only involves laser sensors that aids you to drive around traffic using the said lasers. Some companies have been doing this for quite some time, such as Honda with their Lane Keep Assist or way back with Mercedes in the late 90s. A neat feature to be used to detect traffic nearby. The next level is a bit of an upgrade from the first as this level involves the car steering itself away from the danger. You may have heard of cars that ring off the alarm when it detects that the driver is tired. It is a really cool upgrade to help you navigate through slow and boring traffic. Level 3 is where you can really sense the difference from self-driving cars to requiring a driver. However, Level 3 still needs a driver in case of emergency so it is still not fully fleshed out. The fourth level is an upgrade to the next. It can sense traffic and sense if cars are in front of you. The only con this level has is that it is only available for areas that are pre-mapped, which means unknown lands and inner corners will be much harder. As long as you are in the city or main highways, you can feel comfortable driving without hands. And the fifth level is where your imagination takes place. It is the level where cars don't need any human need for assistance. It is full automation of the car, allowing the man on the wheel to work and even sleep, and the car will do its thing. This is the goal of the automated car race. And when it comes to the fifth level, there is a company that seems to be creeping their way to level five. In fact, they are slowly getting there and are showing no signs of slowing down. We are talking of course about Tesla. Tesla has proved itself time and time again to be one of the leaders in the self-driving car race as there are videos online of people sleeping in their Tesla while riding it on the highway. Almost every car that Tesla has is able to go the distance with the fifth level of automation. The only thing stopping them are regulators that disallow Elon Musk to do the things that he must do. But even so, Tesla is still able to have guidance that can pass as the third and fourth levels of automation. It has automatic lane centering, cruise control, self-parking, and navigation that makes driving so much easier and fun. That is why a lot of people are viewing them as the leaders in car automation as the potential it has to drive cross-country in a safe manner. Another leader in the self-driving car race is a company that some of you may not expect or maybe even not heard of yet. The company is called Mobileye, and if it sounds familiar to you, that is because it is a former partner of Tesla. They are actually playing the long game here by licensing the hardware needed to manufacture cars. These parts are needed by big brands such as BMW, Volkswagen, and even Nissan. And now, they have been bought by the chip manufacturer, Enel back in 2017. And this means that they are able to dish out more and more hardware for the consuming companies. They are now the leaders when it comes to manufacturing self-driving cars because they basically control who gets what and they will know how to use their devices better. Because of the power they have, they have already partnered with a small startup company called Udly. Their commitment to Mobileye is to promise 3,000 self-driving delivery cars. That is a lot of cars. 
There are also startups and companies that are taking it slow but have a lot of potential with what they can do. One of those companies is Nura, which is a California-based company. The reason why Nura is making a lot of noise is because of the utility of their vehicles. You see, Nura is more focused on making both cars that are programmed for the residential areas to deliver goods. They can do your groceries in Kroger, or even fetch you some food so that you don't have to go out. A super cool concept. And we also have here Zoix, which is a startup that is now owned by Amazon, as they were purchased for a whopping $1.3 billion. The company is mainly working on the streets of Las Vegas, and they automate delivery. Another up-and-comer in the scene. Another player in the race is the China-based startup companies such as Autox, Pony, I, and Weiride. These companies are still behind as they are still on level 3 or 4, but you know how progressive and fast things can evolve in China, especially when it comes to technology. China is really keen when it comes to businesses and it would be no surprise to see their names at the top of the self-driving car companies. Maybe they will start locally and work their way up to release robotic cars that can drive by themselves. Speaking of self-driving utility vehicles, Waymo is the leader when it comes to automated taxes in the United States. Now, you may be asking, why do we need to automate even the taxes? Well, for taxi firms and big taxi companies, they spend about 80% of their money on the human drivers according to data analysts. So, how do you save a bit of money? You take humans out of the equation. That is the goal of Waymo. They plan to reduce their delivery and running costs with their solution. But still, Waymo still has a lot of way to go before they can fully be automated. As of now, they are a level 4 automated company, which means that they still need people to work with them. But in Phoenix, Arizona, Waymo taxis can be seen running around the streets almost 600 vehicles to be exact. These cars are running around doing driver stuff, but the person behind the wheel does not have to do anything at all. They can relax and call for support whenever they need it. A really cool car that can help you drive around and deliver things for you right at your doorstep. And they are looking to expand and go farther, which I think is really nice. The reason for this is that their main downside is that they are operating in a small area. Don't get me wrong, Phoenix is huge, but they can go bigger. The world is a big place. That is why they are partnered with Lyft in their taxi endeavors. And with their goal, they can deliver goods in a safe manner. Speaking of self-driving utility vehicles, one of the world's biggest taxi firms are also trying to get into space. Uber has been trying to get into the self-driving car industry for years, but have been struggling to keep up. They have a department that is designated to look for a solution to this industry. And they really need to do so especially if they want to keep their business going for the next several years. But it will be hard for them considering that they have been facing different setbacks over the last few years, which may be one of the reasons why they are lagging behind a bit in comparison to their competitions. But the good thing for Uber is that Aurora is a partner for them. Aurora being a crucial part in Uber's growth to be fully autonomous, needs to mature quickly so that Uber will be able to use their robotics without having any more setbacks. Especially if they want to beat their rivals in the very own taxi firm industry. Uber needs to act quickly and now if they want to keep staying relevant. If they don't, I guess we will have to call an Uber for them. So, with all these companies working hard to produce automated cars in the future, what is taking them so long? Well, because some analysts actually believe that the car system we have now is actually quite decent. But with the coming of self-driving cars, every memory and moments that we have with cars will all be removed. And having new cars will just add on to the dusting of cars. That is why some analysts believe that having public autonomous cars will be better in addition to the system that we have now. This is what the company GM is fighting for. In the past, they already tried solo cars that are automated in their home base of San Francisco. Thanks to their AI partners in Cruise, they were able to test their robot cars and have been successful in doing so. 
and with the streets of San Francisco conquered, they were confident of sharing their knowledge to the whole world. But they are more focused on having a subscription feature for their public sort of bus, a vehicle where about six people can ride together to a shared location. Of course, they still have their main cars to sell for private use, but the public transport is also a great idea to also remove the traffic, and it looks like they are close to releasing the final product. They might start again in their home in San Francisco or where the shared vehicles are being produced, which is in Detroit. And if they can successfully pull this off, it would be safe to assume that other countries will be doing this as well. But I think that is all the time we have for this video. Which company do you think will lead the way when it comes to automated vehicles? Be sure to comment down below as we love hearing from you guys. And while you are down there, subscribe to the channel and like the videos. Until then on Lit Technology.